Welcome to another episode of the Remy Podcast. Once again, uh, our, our first back-to-back co-host, Ruben. Thank you for coming back. Ow! Let's go. He's very excited. Um, we're gonna we're gonna start out with some quick corrections. The Astros outfielder we could not think of last week, and I'm embarrassed to say, is George Springer. George. And also, as much as uh, we love JT Romuto and do think he's an amazing starting catcher, I was slightly off the mark with that uh, 297 batting average, and it's uh, more in the mid to upper uh, 270s. Yeah, with with back issues, so you can compile them and maybe a good pass for the Mets. It is, and that kind of segues us into the uh, the first topic of today, and I know many of you are, are curious about Manny Machado, but we will be getting to him in a little bit. But uh, just kind of as we talked about last week and uh, alluded to here a second ago, the Mets did finally capitalize on uh, on the catcher. Uh, Ken Rosenthal reported, and it's been confirmed, that the Mets did sign uh, Wilson Ramos uh, for a two-year $19 million pack. Uh, he's going to be a tandem with uh, Travis Darno. Uh, he is considered to be one of the top catchers in the league uh, since 2011. He's had a 273 average, uh, 758 OPS, and he averages 14 home runs a season. Last year he did 306 as a batting average, 15 home runs split between the Rays and Phillies. Uh, he's considered to be a great pitch framer. However, over the past several years he's had a ton of injury scares and issues with hamstring injuries, uh, ACL injuries. Uh, Ruben, you are you are my designated Mets yes, fan. Uh, what are your thoughts? What are your takeaways on the Mets uh, grabbing Wilson Ramos? So really briefly, if we're going to talk about a tag team with Darno, uh, are we talking about hopefully 155 games for Ramos and seven for Darno? Because that 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 sounds good to me. Um, but uh, more to your point, I think it's a good signing. Uh, the Mets do not give away prospects for somebody who gives you marginally better uh, production in Real Muto. Uh, you get a defensive, uh, an above average defensive catcher, and something that the Mets haven't had in a while. I think uh, uh, Ramos, his last three years, he's hovering in the 290, 300 range for the last three years. He hits the ball well, he puts the ball in play, he doesn't strike out all that much, and the Mets' leading hitter last year was Brandon Nimbo at about 267. <laughs> so we could use a little uh, bat on ball, if you know what I mean. Absolutely, and I think it's great that you've you've added a solid catcher. You have a great well, aging second baseman in Cano. You got a good back end of the bullpen, bringing Familia back and adding Diaz. Your 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 uh, GM the other day said that uh, the Mets should be the favorites in the NL East now. Do you think that is as insane as I do, or do you agree with uh, Brody's uh, assertion that you guys are, are are top pickings in the NL East? You mean Jean-Claude Van Wagenen? Because that's what we're going to go with. If Jean-Claude Van Wagenen says that we're going to be at the top of the NL East, who am I to stop him? I mean, a kick in the face is coming my way. Um, (laughs) It's baseball. Uh, Baseball can have drastic changes from year to year. I did read on fan graphs that the Mets, uh, by their standards, are considered to have the third best bullpen in baseball now. And last year, I think they were ranked 27th. So he's addressed a glaring weakness. Ramos addresses a glaring weakness. Do I think he's done, Jean-Claude? No, I don't. Do I think we're the favorites? I would have trouble actually uh, unseating the Braves because of how young they are and how well young talent tends to develop uh, after they've given time to show what they can on on the grand stage. Uh, they need pitching help, and if they get uh, some help in pitching, I would not place us above the Mets because we're collectively an us right now. I would not place <laughs> the Mets above the, the Braves. Uh, the Phillies uh, could be a factor uh, if they make a couple of key free agent signings, but we'll get to that nudge, later. Nudge, nudge, wink, wink. <laughs> and uh, I think Washington, uh, they, they obviously they, they made a, a nice starting uh, pitching pickup, but they're going to lose, uh, I think, a pretty big bat in their lineup. So... I think it's a competitive, much more competitive uh, situation than it's been um, with multiple teams in the running. I think that's fair. And then another big pickup is the uh, the Astros got a really much needed left-handed outfield bat to kind of split up their predominantly righty lineup. Uh, Ken Rosenthal reported and it's been confirmed that they signed Michael Brantley to a two-year, thirty million dollar pack, got a two million dollar signing bonus. Uh, Brantley is kind of an interesting guy, so. 
Last year in 143 games, he had a 309 average, hit 17 home runs, a good base stealing threat. He's 31 years old, but the, the thing that's concerning, and I think when you mention uh, Michael Brantley and anybody, is 143 games this is his most since 2014. He has been sidelined one way or another uh, for a, a lot of the past few years, um, but what he can do defensively as an athlete, as a hitter, you know, it's a good gamble, in my opinion. What sure. the Astros did is a great gamble. Um, Lance McCullers, who's one of the pitchers uh, for the Astros, you know, said on Twitter that uh, he, he's more than happy to have him yep. on the team versus hitting against him. Um, I mean, he, he is a very good pickup for a team that uh, definitely needed a, a solid lefty bat. Yeah, I mean, because you've got Bregman, you've got Correa, you've got Altuve, you've got Curious George. That's what I'll refer to him now since, you know, it'll help me remember his name. <laughs> and they're all right-handed hitters there. Um, so you throw a left-handed bat in there to, to, to break that up, uh, it's a good signing. It, but you can't be afraid to succeed, or you can't be afraid to fail at the risk of succeeding. And there is, there is an asterisk with him, with the injuries, as you talked about. Well, there's there's other things that was brought up in that McCullers tweet. You know, the dimensions in the Astros outfield is a little bit uh, less strenuous than the Indians' uh, home ballpark. Um, you know, there's some flexibility, some fluidity with DH as well that maybe sure. you could stick Brantley in to try and save him a little bit. Um, Did they get rid of the hill in center field? To, uh, to, uh, to, Oh my goodness, I feel ridiculous. I, I, I've actually been to that ballpark. I've been yeah. to Minute Maid Park. They did get rid of it. I didn't know yeah. that. I, I thought um, they did, because that, that was that's an injury uh, uh, waiting to happen. Uh, what was it? Ta Taos Hill. Somebody's going to correct me, and I'm going to feel like a schmuck, because I, I, I've been to that ballpark, and I'm friends with some Astros fans, so I apologize ahead of time on that. Um, but yeah, that, that the hill has been uh, removed. <laughs> the bunker. The, the snare and trap. Maybe Brantley wouldn't have signed there if the... Uh, <laughs> Hey, listen, in terms of center field uh, menagerie going on, the Yankees used to have the monuments literally in the playing area, so <laughs> in center field. So uh, I think a hill is a little bit uh, easier there. Um, but kind of shifting gears, still staying in the AL West, the Angels made some uh, curious pickups uh, today and uh, a couple days ago. They got Matt Harvey and then today Trevor Cahill. Uh, $20 million for both of those guys. Uh, that's money saved by not spending on Corbin. Um, Joel Sherman of the New York Post said, you know, they they would have been interested in Corbin, but uh, a little bit too expensive for their for their tastes. Uh, Cahill comes in as an extreme ground ball pitcher. He's getting that one year nine million dollars, as reported by Ken Rosenthal. Uh, Matt Harvey they got for one year eleven million dollars. Um, with both of these guys, neither neither of them are necessarily uh, sexy signings, so to speak. They're not a Patrick Corbin. They're not a Jay Happ. Um, Harvey, obviously, as you know better than anyone, has some well-documented issues with the Mets, but seemed to rebound nicely, um, you know, with the Reds. Uh, Trevor Cahill's bounced around the league. He's been everything from a Diamondback to a to he was with the A's, the Royals, the Cubs, uh, starter, reliever. He's had a lot of injuries. Um, what do you what do you make of these of these signings? You know, what what are the Angels doing with this rotation? <laughs> well, I, I twitch when you said Harvey. I don't know what that is. It's involuntary. Oh, man. I got to tell you, they, they finished fourth in the AL West last year. Their collective team ERA, I believe, was 415 last year, 19th in uh, all of Major League Baseball. This is not going to get them over the hump. Uh, it's a bold prediction there. I'm sorry. It's not Matt Harvey of 2013. Uh, Cahill, as you said, what is he? Is he a starter? Is he a reliever? Uh, he bounces around. I, I feel, I feel for the best player in baseball, Mike Trout. What are they doing with his with his time there? Well, I mean, that's that's part of it. Is they have two more years of Mike Trout. Yeah. They need to win in that time frame. They're not, maybe they maybe maybe Mike Trout says, you know, I, I've been in LA all this time on the face of the franchise. I want to yeah. stay. But realistically, he's an East Coast guy. I. I Predicting right now that he doesn't stay an angel, also with their financial restraints. Well, if they if they're not going to spend on Corbin, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> what? you're going to spend on Harvey, you're going to spend on Cahill. They got two pitchers for uh, the price of a one year tag for one, even though Corbin got a little, you know, like 23, 24 million. But yeah. I, you need to put a winner around him now. What yes. they did is they didn't they they are a team of and I, I hate to use this phrase or cliche, they are a team of half measures. They're doing just enough to field. Something that maybe on paper looks like it could be competitive, 
Yeah. But besides having the best the best player on the planet, besides having Justin Upton, yeah. uh, th- th- it's it's not a team that can competently uh, be in a le- sure. or be in a division with the Astros. Uh, the Oakland A's do amazing things there. Yeah. Um, I mean, Seattle's on the downswing since they're rebuilding. But to be fair, I think even Seattle could compete competently with the Angels. They're not doing enough to give themselves a push to give themselves an edge. And yeah. no, and no major attractive uh, free agent talent is is gonna yeah. want to necessarily sign there and be there. Yeah. Uh, I mean, being with Trout, yes, is is very attractive. But you got you got a two year window where you need to act now. Well, if you. So, so I don't want to make this too Mets centric, but one of the issues uh, about the Mets and their payroll, and let's not get into the financial uh, Will Ponds mess, <laughs> but you can't be a big city franchise and act like a small market team. So you can't be the Mets and act like the A's. You can't be the Angels and act like the A's. You have to if your if your goal is to keep Otani, which they'll keep him. I mean, they've got him under contract. I don't know how long now. But if you want to get Trout, you've got to you've got to impress him. And the fact that he's loved there, that he's the best player in baseball. But what does he have to show for it? What's his legacy? Is he going to be the best player ever or top five player ever that never won anything? He could, and I mean, you know, with Otani being there, so they they do supplement and spend. You know, granted, it was an international signing, and he took a lot less money than he could have gotten from the Yankees per se. So I mean, they 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 they're capable of making smart decisions. But I, you know, I, mean, I am happy that you brought up the Mets because there's a parallel there. If you look at the LA market, and I know they're the the Los Angeles Angels of yeah. Anaheim of Southern California, whatever they want to call yeah. themselves, there is a parallel between. Dodgers, Yankees, yep. and then Angels, Mets. Sure, they don't do enough when they, you know, could to to step out of the shadows of the of the bigger image team. You know, yep. the Dodgers spend ungodly sums of money. They're they're curtailing that now, but the Angels are in a division that I think maybe not be winnable for a few years, but they should be able to compete, and that's the main thing that I think drives people crazy. Well, but it could be smoke and mirrors. They, they could easily finish in second place because Oakland, I mean, how often can you keep repeating the cycle where you don't have enough and you're, you're just making savvy moves? Seattle, they're already cutting costs. They're, they're trading away assets. But Houston's, I mean, Houston's got another four, five years. I, I mean, that lineup is awesome. That pitching staff is awesome. And and they're the big boys now. They're competing with the Yankees and the Red Sox. And I don't disagree for a minute. It's just my my thing is and, and what we alluded to earlier is you have this limited time frame to yeah. act with what you have. And I know, you know, Otani's going to be the centerpiece there after Trout's gone for however many years that is after the fact. Yeah. But how are you going to attract, maintain and keep Big stars. If if you're not going all in when you have the pieces, and you know they're they're they weren't great last year. They had some injury problems and things too. Uh, four out of their five starters were coming back from Tommy John at one point or another. Yeah. The, these are half measure moves. Yeah. They're they're not they're not gonna finish. I I don't see them finishing above. And we have a very long off season still ways to go before spring training, but they're not gonna finish more than more than third. Uh, yeah. th- th- they're not in a position to so do so. So we got Houston, we've got Oakland, and then we're putting uh, possibly the Angels. Yeah, yeah, that that wouldn't surprise me. But I I think it, if they do finish third, it w- it would be a smoke and mirrors sort of third place. It won't be anything where you can really hang your hat that there's progress being made here. No. Well, speaking of progress uh, being made, we just uh, are going to switch gears to the uh, the last and major topic of the evening is Manny Machado had his much ballyhooed. Uh, tour so to speak originally we were told that he was going to meet with the chicago white Sox, the uh philadelphia phillies and of course uh, my beloved new york yankees and that there might be you know three other sort of mystery teams uh bandied about within that uh i did want to bring up and i'm doing that right now so i apologize that you guys are bearing with me but i did run the twitter poll again this week asking everybody where manny machado was going to sign 67 percent of you said the white Sox. Yeah, I know. Twenty-two percent of you said the Yankees, six percent Phillies, and six percent a mystery team. Um, so Monday he met with the White Sox. He was there for several hours, had some good dinner, and a night on the town with uh, their ownership group. Uh, yesterday he met with the Yankees. 
Uh, Twitter went nuts because he was there for 90 minutes, but I, I want to counter that for a second. I do want to take a brief moment to focus on that. Manny Machado's entire career, save the last few months of last season with the Dodgers, has been in the American League East. He is very well familiar with Yankee Stadium. If he's as, as gun ho about joining the Yankees as you know the rumor mill would like you to believe, he's, t he's he's just talking turkey and things. He's talking brass tacks with Cashman and the like. Uh, the Yankees brought Carlos Beltran, who shares an agent with Manny, to be their special advisor. Uh, at the All Star Game last year, Manny's nephew said, oh, he, "Oh, I'd like to see my uncle go to the Yankees." When asked if he wasn't in Baltimore, where where would he go? And Manny had a very uh, telling facial uh, response to him saying that. Manny's enamored with New York. Now, whether Brian Cashman and company want to, you know, back up the Brinks truck, so to speak, to, to bring him on is one thing or another, but that meeting was not for Manny to be wine and dined and impressed. He's impressed with New York. He's impressed with the Yankees. He knows the city. He knows the stadium. The, the you know, I'm not, I was not a fly on the wall, obviously. I don't have any sources or anything, but it just stands to reason that that's the case, that Manny's saying, here's what it takes, here's what I want, here's what I'm looking for, yep. and then... You know, Hal Steinbrenner did say that Manny's going to have to answer for some of the remarks he made about, you know, not being Johnny Hustle and maybe for some of the, the dirty play he's perceived of having. So this is, this, in my opinion, in my opinion, more so than him being, you know, trotted around Chicago or trying to, you know, get a feel for the city of Philadelphia, this is Manny selling himself to the Yankees more so than a city selling itself to Manny in this particular uh, situation. And then... Uh, he is meeting with the Phillies today. He's been at the stadium since this morning. They're going to, you know, do the whole uh, dinner and city sightseeing type of deal that he did in Chicago with the Phillies. Uh, there was a little video on Twitter. A construction worker ran up to him when he got out of the car and hugged him and was, you know, telling him to get that money. So uh, that's that's cutesy. I'm sure he probably loved being accosted as soon as he steps out of a uh, out it's of his, Philadelphia. Yeah, of course. It's, it's a Philadelphia kiss right there. The guy, no, well, he didn't punch him in the face or throw <laughs> batteries at him, so I don't know if that's necessarily oh, true. Oh, because Manny wasn't dressed in a Santa Claus outfit, obviously. Of course. <laughs> we, we know the class and civility of the Philadelphia fans. Philly, I'm, I'm marginally kidding. Um, <laughs> you, you gave us such wonders as gritty, so how, how can I mock you but so? Um, Ru Ruben, what's your kind of feel uh, you know, on this sort of parade? I mean, it's, it's not like the MLB to have, and it's happened with Patrick Corbin too, you don't see this highly publicized where will he sign, yeah. you know, stadium team visits. You know, that's not usually baseball-like, but I think it's a good glitz and glamour thing, you know, putting Machado aside for a moment. I think it's a nice thing to see. Sure. Um, and, and unlike you, I do have inside sources because uh, Carlos Beltran is from the same neighborhood in Puerto Rico that I grew up in. Uh, this is actually true, no embellishment here, and I believe he said, pay the men more money. And, uh, no, so, uh, honestly, is he going to end up with the Yankees? I think he's going to end up with whoever gives him the best contract, to, to tell you the truth. It could be uh, Philadelphia, it's a band box, uh, his numbers will skyrocket over there, uh, but it's hard to believe that the Yankees aren't going to walk away with the biggest splash of the offseason, especially when they've been so close two consecutive years to being in the series. They need the uh, the push over the hump. The fan base is going to demand it. They haven't done anything dramatic yet. And and Mr. Uh, Jean-Claude Van Wagenen is stealing the headlines right now. So I would be hard-pressed to believe that the Yankees won't pull this off. I understand, you know, uh, going through all your options, meeting with the different teams, seeing what they offer, and nobody's going to outspend them. And we can apologize next week if we're wrong and we'll do... I don't know. We'll give each other a Philadelphia kiss with fists. You, you want to fight me on the air? We're, we're in like a small <laughs> box. I will apologize for audio too because normally we are in an actual recording booth. We're in like a little utility office closet thing here this week. By usually you mean the two previous times you've done this. Uh, the 200. The, the, <laughs> the, two, the two feel like 200. I, <laughs> That's not good for career long. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I will say this. And, I, and I'm trying not to look at things with my pinstriped colored glasses, so to speak. Um, I, I do think that sometimes if, if money is equal or almost equal, that there's a certain, a certain, a certain allure 
that comes with the Yankees. Sure. Uh, I mean, there's certain teams that have it. The Yankees have it. The Dodgers have it. The I begrudgingly say this. The Red Sox oh, have I mean, it. It's Madison Avenue for New York. It's Hollywood in L.A. It's Bean Town in Boston. But we get it. It's it, they're high profile areas. And I just feel that from what I've seen, from what I've heard, that the Yankees make the most sense, you know, for Manny. And I think Manny makes the most sense for the Yankees. You know, it's, I know we're three episodes in now, but we've talked about how the Yankees need to shore up defense. I mean, Miguel Andujar's a butcher at third as much yeah. as I love the guy. Um, you know, Glaber is still kind of getting his hang at second, and nobody on this planet is going to tell you Greg Bird or Luke Voigt is a uh, defensive wizard at first base like a Mark Teixeira was. So they really do need to shore up some defense in the infield. Didi's going to be gone for most of the summer. When he comes back, you can shift Manny uh, over to third. The Yankees are absolutely atrocious with runners in scoring position. Manny hits well with runners, uh, with runners in scoring position. He does so many things that they need right now. Uh, that it, it's just if the Yankees want Manny, and it's and it's not astronomical. If he's not pushing, we've heard that the Yankees don't want to give him a ten-year, three hundred million dollar deal. But if the, if they're giving him a good high annual average, and maybe it's an eight-year deal or seven-year deal or whatever it is that you know Manny is, uh, you know, in agreements of. I, you know, I, I I do think it happens. I don't think you know if all things are considered. I think if Philadelphia order, ordered Philadelphia offered something that was you know a longer contract but close on annual average, I still think Manny goes to the Yankees. And again, I'm just I don't want to be uh, heavy-handed with with uh, bias, but it, that's just what it appears on the surface. You know, the only thing I could consider is if Machado really wants to play shortstop and shortstop only. Uh, I think the Phillies will give him that opportunity. The Yankees, when Gregorius comes back, he's got that position. And what are the Yankees going to do with Andujar? Are they going to shift him to first base, or are they going to look to move him? From several reports and things that are out there in the Twitterverse, so to speak, and it's all speculation. You know, Everybody has sources, this, that, or the other, but uh, it's just conjecture to me. That they still would really like to get that ace. There's high, uh, high leverage pitching available maybe, at the trade deadline, maybe you're looking at a bum gardener. Maybe the Mets do trade. Ooh, Syndergaard. Yeah, maybe the Mets do trade Thor. Uh, they're not, they like Andujar, but I don't think they're enamored with him. He he puts in a lot of work from what I've seen. Um, I, I think that the guy's a phenomenal hitter, but he just, he he's a lead rock out there. He doesn't, you know, have great hands. He doesn't have great footwork. And he's working on this. You got you got to know he's a 23 year old kid, 22, 23 year old kid. He wasn't even expected to play third base last year. That's why they got Brandon Drury. That's why they traded for Drury with the Diamondbacks because they wanted, you know, him to have time to sort of uh, manifest himself and learn that position and you know be put in there gradually. But with the injuries that they had, they had to throw him in the deep end. So what do you do when Didi comes back and you slide Machado to third? If Voight and uh, Bird don't prove themselves, just slide him to first. There's been some talk about putting him, you know, maybe in left, uh, or maybe you could put Stanton in left. But I don't see the Yankees wanting to do that. Uh, you know, on a previous show, I said that the Yankees a little bit of le- leery of having Stanton be an everyday outfielder because of his legs. Uh, he didn't respond super well to that uh, last year when he had to play in the outfield for a elongated amount of time, um, a prolonged amount of time. So. Andujar could be that odd man out that you use to get, you know, your 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 ace, your number one, especially if Severino maybe starts faltering again in the second half like he did this past year. I love yep. Severino. I think he'll be fine. Uh, but you do have some options on what you can do with Andujar. You know, I, I, I don't want to see him go, but, you know, you can have a great player. You can have a player that everybody hands down thinks is wonderful and fantastic. Um but if they can net you something that is of a greater need, you hate to part with it, yep. but you do it so you can have that need. I mean, you know, he's no Sonny Gray, hashtag Gray Watch, <laughs> but uh, you have those pieces that just don't fit on your team that somebody else values yeah. and that maybe they do better elsewhere. I mean, Andy Hart's doing great in New York, but I just mean in the, perce- in the, in the instance of him bringing in, you know, that top-tier pitching talent that the Yankees just don't have. Yeah, you know, I, I, I can see it, and you... You trade from strength. Trade from strength. 
Hashtag trick from Trank. <laughs> hashtag, hashtag we better sign Manny. Hashtag we better sign. <laughs> we do. There's options out there. And uh, and by we, I mean you. And yeah. <laughs> Sorry. No, it's okay. But hopefully uh, next week some more uh, some more items will come off the board, so to speak. So we'll, And maybe we'll speculate a little bit on where some of these uh, remaining free agents uh, will end up. Uh, the ballots for the 2019 Hall of Fame have been out there, and, and some have been starting to be returned. So maybe we can talk about, uh, you know, pr- some perspective on some of these different uh, alleged Hall of Famers. Uh, so we have some options and things. Uh, since the uh, the show won't air again till afterwards, we want to wish everybody uh, celebrating a uh, Merry Christmas, uh, joyful Kwanzaa, joyful, joyful, uh, a fantastic Toyotathon. Is that a thing? I don't know. I <laughs> I had Hanukkah already, so uh, you could still wish me a happy Wait, Hanukkah, but I had Hanukkah's a thing too. Yeah, Hanukkah's a thing too. <laughs> you wouldn't know, but yes, we, we we like our Hanukkah. I haven't. I don't see any Hallmark commercials. No, you don't. You still see Hallmark uh, commercials, movies, songs on the radio. Yeah, you don't quite get that. Yeah. But um, yeah, so after the after the holiday, we'll have some uh, good stuff coming in. Uh, as always, we thank you guys for listening. We appreciate you letting us ramble at you for a half an hour. Um, enjoy your holidays. Enjoy your time with your family. Thank you so much, and always be a fan. It's a trap!